Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So appreciate it. I know this is such a busy time of year, so I'm so happy to have you here with us. Um, as <laughs> we had a little technical difficulty but at the very last minute today, so thanks for hanging in and waiting. Audio. Appreciate it very much. Um, so we, we're... Um, Just uh, okay. Right. Okay. Uh, hope. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're just going to check the audio levels before I get going. And all right. Good. 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 So I have a nice little program um, prepared for you guys today. Couple announcements in between. Uh, the reference photo that I selected for today is something that I've been just kind of hankering to paint for quite a while, and there's. A lot about it that I just really love. I love the gesture of the of the um, trees, the those branches, the, the little glint of of spring foliage just starting to bud out on those branches. And I also love the colors of the the foreground. This is up in the Laconer, Washington area. Um, I was up teaching for Dakota Pastels a number of years ago and snapped this shot. So. I'm happy to be um, getting after that today. Um, but before I begin, I want to just start with a, a little couple little readings and announcements. Then I'll get started and then I'm going to talk a little bit about our Black Friday sale. We have a really amazing sale. It's our best ever sale and it's going until Monday. So now is a really great time to head to the website and check things out. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of a reading from this book, How to Be an Artist by Jerry Saltz, and, and it's kind of a humorous one. It says, artists are cats and art is a dog. I know this sounds ridiculous, but call your dog and it comes right over to you. It places its head on your lap, slobbers, wags its tail, asks to go for a walk, a miraculous direct communication with another species. Now, call your cat. It might look up, it might twitch a bit, perhaps go over to the couch, rub against it, circle once, and lie down. What am I saying? The way the cat reacts is very close to the way artists communicate. The cat is not interested in direct communication. The cat places a third thing between you and it, and it relates to you through this third thing. Artists, like cats, communicate abstractly at a remove. This is why artists hate to be asked what their work means. Even if what they make is a picture of a landscape or a race riot, it's not about only those things. It's about much more, including itself, its materials and how they were used and how the artist sees the world. As for art itself, it's much more like a dog, never quite behaving, making a mess, costing a lot, always making you get supplies, but paying you back in wonder and delight. I think that's pretty cool. And then a little more esoteric. Um, this is from the Journal of Eugene Delacroix, which I also, both of these books, I really highly recommend, though they're sort of at different ends of the spectrum. And this is a little journal entry. Oh, let's see. Uh-oh, I lost my spot. Oh, no. I had it. Oh, here it is. I found it. Amazing. It must, it must be meant to be. October 15th. I've made it a rule never to allow myself to finish a picture unless the effect and the tone have been completely caught and I find this plan very successful. I am always going back over my work, redrawing and correcting. So that's something to, to remember, right? And always in the light of what I feel is needed at that particular moment. Indeed, it would be stupid to do otherwise. What I felt yesterday can be no guide for me today. I did not know how other men work. This is the only method for me. When ever, everything has been carried forward in this way, there is no difficulty about finishing, especially when one uses tones that once fit in with those already set down. Without this, the freshness of the execution is lost, and one spoils the liveliness of sensitive touches, 
Proceeding in this way, the touches seem scarcely to have been modified. Even though he talks about going back over and, and redrawing and correcting, it's really, this is a really interesting and wonderful book. Okay, so there's that. And um, also before I get, begin, I don't know if S.A. is watching today. Um, she's a student of mine. And uh, I just want to thank, she, thank her very much. She sent me a beautiful note, a thank you note for, um, she attended uh, the live workshop this, this um, late summer, fall. But she sent me this beautiful um, hand um, calligraphy of perfection leads to procrastination, leads to paralysis, the three Ps, which is one of my mantras that throughout over my 30 years of teaching the three p's have been a central um kind of point for me and, and a touch point so i'm really happy to have this i'm gonna i'm gonna keep this up here somewhere i have to find the right spot for it to go on the easel but it's gonna it's gonna live someplace prominent so and it's so beautiful okay so thank you sa um, all right, so I thought I would just get going painting today, and then I'll take a little break and talk about our Black Friday sale in the midst of that. Um, hopefully, I hope, I hope this, I was, I hope it turns out. Um, I was, I kind of went to bed thinking about it. All right, I could, uh, should I do an underpainting? Should I do an alcohol wash? Uh, you know, how sh exactly should I approach it? As with any piece, I kind of want to do a little analysis about how I might envision the the piece finished. Though, I'm you know I, I'm not I'm not necessarily um, I, I see that fully fully um, um, fully cooked, if you might say. But I do look at the ref various reference photos or subject and try to um, analyze what materials and what kind of approach techniques are going to get me to a result that feels satisfying. So um, on this one, it feels like there's, there could have been a, a, a number of ways to go. So I, what I landed on was to do a, so a little drawing, a little alcohol wash, maybe stain in a little bit of color and then, and then see where I see where I end up. All right, so I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. We'll see, we'll see how it turns out. And you know, you guys, I am not afraid of just busting something out and maybe it won't turn out um, on a live stream. It feels It always feels a tiny bit risky, <laughs> but, um, but it is also honest and it's real. And that it's what really happens when you're painting in the studio is um, sometimes you know exactly where you're you're headed and sometimes you don't um, for me as a painter i don't really want to know exactly where i'm headed all the time because that's um, that's to me part of being an artist is that those moments of discovery those aha moments of okay um, and and part of it is when it goes awry that's just part of the game it's part of, <laughs> I guess, being the dog. I don't know. I don't want to make that analogy too much today. Okay, so I've selected pastel matte. This is the wine pastel matte. And um, I have, you know, you guys ask a lot about sizes. And so I've kind of figured out that, well, maybe, maybe I should try to get a little bit more um, exacting about the size. So I'm going to make this 12 by 18, just so that, because that's a relatively standard size. And it's gonna give me plenty of room of, of, along the border to um, make some practice marks if I need it. And I like the division of space uh, implied right away by this reference photo. Um, and I'm also going to, so this is, I've got my blue spruce, but I'm also going to play with the idea of using some charcoal in here. Um, 
you get this this whole shape and suggest that the the gesture of these guys and these the the other thing that interests me about this is the these sort of intervals there's some thicker branches and there's some more gestural curved ones there's some branches that are um, um, moving in this more organic direction. Then there's this beautiful, beautiful one that's just arching all the way over. It's and then there's some that are behind. So there's there's the overlapping of them, and then there's and then there's these wispy branches that those are hard to paint. And and how do how do we get those and and make them look natural. So for me, what I'm going to do to get those is I'm going to just mop in some um, pastel in a really thin way. And then um, rather than drawing lines like this, so I'm using the edge of the stick and I'm using this sort of um, uh, like a wash to get those started. And then there's this one here that's, that's, it's kind of falling down. It's, but it's so pretty. And it's casting the soft cast shadow across the landscape. And just even that, it's really nice. And then there's this light back here, it's pretty. And then there's a little bit of foliage back in here. Here's this. And then I can come over here. And so I've got this guy that's coming here, but then I've got this nice kind of pine that acts as a little bit of a stopper right there. So there's some really cool stuff going on. Now here I'm adding this little bit of wash up here. I'm going to put some with the blue spruce and up in here. See, see this wash of the blue spruce? I'm going to be able to pick up some of that color and value when I start in a little bit more. Now I'm debating with myself whether I want to do the alcohol wash or not. Kind of thinking, uh, I'm almost thinking no. But maybe I can do it in part in sections. I've got this beautiful grass in here. So I like it. It's got it's good setup. It's got a, a beautiful gesture to it already. And I'm holding the pastel in a really, you know, if loose manner, just kind of like with a really light touch. All right. Get some wash on there and um, let's see what happens. So I'm going to put a little bit. Oh, that's so neat. <laughs> yeah. This one? Yes, I did. That's, um, and I highly recommend to all my students to to make one with pastel, not to just rely on a printed one, because there's nothing like that. And it's, there's nothing like doing it. It's, it's definitely hard, way harder than it looks to make one. Um, um, but it's, it's a worthwhile um, use of time. Okay. So I'm not going to just cover the entire surface of the paper with the alcohol wash, but I'm going to just add a little in. And 
it's good time while this dries for me to chat a bit about our sale. So, yeah, okay, we'll let that dry for a little bit. And that's a nice, exciting start. The one thing about this, I'm hoping that I can get fairly far on it. But this, the finishing this piece really relies on knitting that sky around those branches, which can, um, to be done nicely, does take a bit of patience and a bit of time. So we'll see how far I, I can get with it today. Um, and I also love the shadows that are casting across those branches. From One branch is casting another shadow um, across. So it's just really pretty. The light's just spectacular. All right. So yes, we are still having our Black Friday sale. And so head to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com and check it out. It's, it's an incredible sale, the best prices we can possibly offer. And it ends on Monday. So this weekend is a great time to go and poke around and see what's there. Every single workshop is on sale and there's a coupon code for $23 off any order, which can be used just once. But really, it's the very best time of year to get our annual um, subscription monthly pastel painting lessons online, which you can buy monthly. You can get monthly, but the annual is really the best um, value. Uh, now we're in our fifth year, so there's five entire years of content. So every year has tw <laughs> there's 12 months and every year and there's three there's three and later on we did four projects per month. So it's hundreds of videos and our you know hundreds and hundreds of hours of video. The content it's like it's a really vast library of content. We're really super proud of it. Um, and we have tons of new features for our members and well and ongoing features. Uh, it's really my flagship. Um, membership. So I spent so, you know, the bulk of my time gets devoted to our um, subscription. Um, we have an incredible Facebook group that is um, really a devoted group of students that are really super supportive of one another. We're really proud of the community we built there. We have guest artists now, we're calling Art Speak. So we've got a, an, a, an incredible lineup of modern pastel masters, Tony Elaine, Don Emerson, Mike Beeman, Colette Odia-Smith, Lynn Aselta, Jacob Aguiar, Aline Ordman, Andrew McDermott, Adrian Frankel, and more to come. Um, so, and it's been so amazing to share in the wisdom of these artists. I've been super inspired this year by them and just getting just their their point of view about painting uh, and their technical um, expertise. It's just been just all around just an incredible journey and just so fun to talk to them. We've also introduced Mastery Mindset. And to me, this is a really important aspect of the membership because we you know, it's, you know, engaging in art making, it's, it's, to me, it's, it's the most wonderful thing that we can really do with our time. But there's a lot of complexity to it. There's a lot of aspects to it, the principles of art making, the elements of art. And it's not just a linear thing, you know, you don't just start out and then, you know, get better, get better, get better. It's, it's a, it's a learning spiral really. And you, and the, the more you learn, the more you can engage in the principles of art. And so mastery mindset is an opportunity for me to, um, give my perspective on that and may hopefully insight for you guys and really ways to incorporate, um, art and art making into your lifestyle. Uh, we've also introduced learning pathways this year, which um, I built the subscription so that you could really be inspired and jump around. You have, if you're an annual member, you have 
immediate access to the entire library of content, which is vast. But for some people that can be really overwhelming. So we introduce learning pathways um, that focus on a particular aspect of painting or subject matter that you might be interested. So you can follow an order of the lessons if that's, if that's your style, if that's the way you like to learn, you know, and there are definitely people that have been engaging in the lessons in that way. We also do two critiques for members a month. We have a um, what we call a critique stream where you get to upload an image and I go through and, he talk, and I talk about um, all the submissions. I talk about all of the submissions and yes, they are brief, but cumulatively, I think that it's so valuable for everyone to learn from what everyone is doing because we all kind of make the same mistakes. <laughs> and in a way that's good because when we make the same mistakes, if we can key into that, then we can identify them and we can make, um, we can make adjustments from there. And I'm a firm believer on building on what's working, minimizing those things that aren't working and just staying really positive about our art making in general. So they're really positive, actionable critiques. And then in addition to the critique stream, we do a super stream, which is a lesson and critiques every month. So you get two. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty robust membership. And again, it's really the best time to sign up for it right now. Um, with the coupon, everyone can get a workshop for next to nothing. Oh, the other thing too, is if you are a member of annual or monthly, you get um, extra $20 off every workshop. So don't miss out on the opportunity. And I just wanna thank everyone, all my students from all around the world. I'm so grateful to be able to, to do this and to bring art to as many people um, as I can as, as, as possible. That's, that's really my mission because I, I truly believe it's the most amazing thing. And this year, just like last year, we're doing a painting give, give, giveaway. And so we have 15 paintings that are going to um, 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 monthly and annual members. Here they are, they're all ready to go. I gotta show you. I've already got them all packed up. And Bryce, maybe you can cycle through some of the paintings because they're, do you see them? Giveaway paintings, yeah. Yeah, so there's three and then there's two. So there's, those are three of them. And there's three more. Yeah, and then there are two, yeah, two more. And yeah, so I'm giving all of these paintings away this year. So you have a really good opportunity to not only get an incredible membership of our library and work with our whole team. You know, we have a lovely, lovely little group that we, um, you know, we have a family um, you can get a painting as well. So, so go to the website, check it out. It's a really good deal. Um, all right. So let's see back to painting. Let's see how far we get here. Is this dry? It's pretty dry. I mean, I might need to give this a little shot with the hair dryer just to get it finally, finally dry enough to, yeah. Yeah, and also just the, the standalone workshops are, are um, I'm really proud of those two. Um, there's 20 of them now, including, wow, what we have sunsets and pastel. We have, well, there's workshops in acrylic, there's workshops in watercolor, there's drawing, there's pastel, um, color college, which is a really robust workshop making your mark, which is a, um, one of the workshops, one of the very first flagship workshops that I'm really proud of. Um, yeah, there's, well, there's, there's a ton there. So, um, okay. I think this is in pretty good shape. All right, let's give this a go. Uh, let's see what happens today. 
And I am going to start by just getting some of these, some of this in for the There's a beautiful dappled light. These, these guys just, I'm looking for something that's a little, probably gonna shut up a little bit so that I can paint cause I, I'm loving, I'm loving what's going on here so. Oh, also, I have to mention, so I'm hosting Tony Elaine um, in May here um, in Milwaukee. He's doing a live workshop here. Um, and Milwaukee, Oregon. Milwaukee, Oregon. Yes, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> um, and it sold out within, oh boy, it was like less than, it was like 48 hours, so... Um, that's going to be so much fun. Can't wait to see Tony again. And it's Tony's workshop. I'm not teaching, but I'm just hosting and I'll be there and um, we'll have a little meet and greet here at my place. I'm also going to be doing my um, um, loosen up workshop Again, uh, I'll probably do it in September this year. So look for that. Not sure yet. So we haven't, we, that's not out there yet, but okay. Um, there's all these beautiful kind of soft colors in these branches that I, I want to um, say something about. All right, so I've got enough kind of going with that. So I'm going to move on to getting. And I like a variety of different kinds of marks in my paintings. You know, I just build them um, with that variety. And different painters do it differently. And that's the thing, you know, I, 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 I really, um, as an instructor, want to help you find your unique way of expressing yourself and of painting. Um, I, don't, I don't want you to paint exactly like me. I mean, it's fine if you do, but <laughs> um, it's really not possible anyway. Everyone just by virtue of you making the mark yourself. All right, so we've got a nice little start here. And I'm gonna start building this foreground. And I have the idea that I want to get some I'm going to put some of this in. So this is some this is new pastel. It's real intense, right? A lot of intensity here. But um, I like to start more intense and then settle things down as I go. So if I start with some more intense um, new pastel, it's good because it's thin.
Back here is this sort of soft foliage back in there. How's everything going technically today? Or Bryce, is it okay? We're working. We're working? <laughs> We're tracking down the initial problem. Oh, really? Oh, kind of. See the errors. What? See the error laws. I'm trying to see what's. Oh, um, mm -hmm. that's always a an adventure, isn't it? All right, here's this distant tree. I don't, I'm not sure I want it that dark. I might want to um, get that to sit back a little bit. I might make it a little bluer, but I haven't quite decided. And the thing that's great is, you know, you, you don't have to, you don't have to decide right away. You can sneak up on stuff. It's, it's okay. Yes, there's this idea that you want to be bold and you want to, you know, be assertive as a painter. Um, there's that too, but um, but to me, there's a like like Delacroix said. He's you know he's making changes, he's making corrections until he gets the right feeling, and then then you get in there and be bolder and more definitive. So I like making these little scratchy marks, some more faceted marks, some um, jewel-like marks, all, all different kinds of marks. There's some interesting red in here. Now, I put that in pretty bright, but again, I'm going to have the opportunity to settle that down. Now, let's think about that sky, right? I am going to make that sky blue because to, because to me, the, 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 the play of this blue sky against this more neutral foreground is what I'm most interested in. So, um, though I don't often, you know, I don't go for blue sky as much. Now I want that sky to be light, really light in value here. So I've got to pick the right thing. So it's got to be pretty darn light down here at the horizon and then have a nice gradation up to here. Now this kind of wispy little branches, little tendrils are really creating a more, more sensation of a gradation than it is actually there in the sky. But I'm going to respect that and um, come come to the, the 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 value of the sky carefully. So that being said, I'm gonna I've got to start. I've got to make the leap and choose something. Initially, right at the horizon, I'm thinking. Actually, this is a really creamy pink so there's some discussion on the chat mm -hmm. about the various workshops and tracy said that she would personally recommend making your mark uh as if you are new to pastels over loosening up or loosen up or loosen up is yeah making your mark is a, it, a nice workshop it's really it simple subject matter, but it really gives you the opportunity to, um, um, it, actually these pairs are from Making Your Mark. Um, we did pairs and we also did landscape, but lots of repetition and um, yeah, I think it's a strong way to get going. They're both fun, but yeah, yeah they are, Making they Your are Mark fun. is really a good way to start. Yeah, it's a fun one. And of course, there's pastels for the serious beginner. Pastels for the serious beginner. And 
な<笑> OK えっと見てない I gotta, I gotta get some sky in, so I gotta, I gotta let myself. No. The danger is getting too dark in the sky too fast. Now I'm gonna come in. And I'm, see, I'm just kind of. Getting it in really thin, wispy, because I'm not, I'm not at that point where I'm wanting to、um, cut into the,、um, the sky holes. So I'm just getting the, the, the basis for it. But I can start to.、Um, Get some of these negative shapes. That's fun. Making your mark is one of my first workshops that we did. Okay, now, now that I've got that, now that I see that, I want to work on the foreground now because I, now I feel like I've got to figure out the color a little bit on that foreground. Let me do a little bit more on the sky here. Just get a little bit more. I want, I want, the, I want, the, I want this gesture, this guy. This guy. And I'm, it, everything that I've done so far is really thin. So I have plenty of opportunity to get something over the top of something. I, I'm, not, I'm not tied to this or married to any of this yet at all. I'm not committed. I'm going to have to commit eventually, but I, I, haven't, I don't have to yet. Okay. What? what was I thinking there? Okay. Just kind of losing, losing my, losing my, what I was after here. Okay. Now I've got it. Let me see what I was doing there. Right. Okay, that starts to come together, but now I, I want to work on this a little bit, and then I'm going to get this the light back in here.、Um, so. I want to put there. Thinking, I want that. It's a little softer.
No. It is. Okay. See, this is now where the fun's going to start. <laughs> is I get to get this in. Oh, and I can see I have this way too big. This doesn't need to be as prominent. In fact, it shouldn't be because it, um, if it is, it, it, the scale of everything doesn't make sense. So I'm going to really cut this back. Just got none. I'm not um, not done with that foreground color. I'm gonna simplify it, and I'm also gonna diminish that that red that I put in there. I don't like it as much as I thought I would. So that's better. So whenever I feel um, uh, stuck, I'm going to go back to a simpler solution. So um, <clears throat> you, you have plans to travel to Italy next year. I Correct. do. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of chatter about perhaps visiting Australia and maybe the UK someday. Okay. Well, I would definitely be interested. Just give me a shout. Just contact support. And if you've got a venue, if you've got an organization and you think that that might be fun for me. <laughs> Do a world tour. Yeah. Cool. Just. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm interested in all that. I am indeed. Okay, that's not, that doesn't surprise me, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> All right, so now, let's see. I'm just thinking about what. That's fun. Okay, we're starting to get some fun things going. And um, I, I'm not going to be able to finish the, I'm not going to be able to finish it. Uh, so what I would like to do is, um, but I like it, so I, I am, I will finish it at some point. Um, what, what I'd like to do is, work on a, a, a section of the sky and a section of the branches so you could see how I go about um, getting it uh, resolved a little bit more. So I'm going to come in to a couple of spots here. 
and just pick out So then, you know, then at one point or another, you have to make that commitment to the, to what you're doing. And you could say I'm doing a lot of negative painting with these branches and getting the, some that appear to be more distant and some appear to be closer to the viewer. And I just, and I really enjoy doing that. So it's, you know, to me, that's just such a fun aspect of, of doing this type of scene. Get that more distant tree shape in there. That's nice. That purple works really nicely. Um, I do want to lighten that up. It's too dark. It's too dark in value. So I think I'm going to use I'd like to, um, let's see if I can get that sky to gradate a little bit more too. Makes sense. And then you still want some of those branches out there, so and come and get these. So I'm restating some of these branches. There's these beautiful little cast shadows on these. Um, so just a little patience. Yeah, that's start, starting to develop nicely. So in the lessons, I show you how I do all of this stuff. And um, hours and hours. And there's lots of ways of engaging with the lessons. Um, but my focus is really to help you not just be um, doing the lessons with the goal of copying the lessons, but to really deeply um, get the principles of painting and be able to develop your own work. So that's super fun.
That's getting that to sit back there in the distance. Mirroring that, that gradation of the sky. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, do some more dynamic mark making in this foreground shape because I think it, it's, I want, I'm going to want that. And I just want to show you how I would start to begin to do that. Um, I'm going to do a tiny bit back here. So I want to lighten up some of that foreground. Marla, did you mm -hmm. purposely choose the wine colored paper for this piece? I didn't want to use um, light paper. I decided, you know, there's again, like I said at the beginning, there's so many ways that you could approach, you know, any painting you could, okay, I could, I could do an underpainting. I could, what's, what's going to serve me the idea that I have for the, for the painting um, best. And so um, that's why I selected the, the the wine because I wanted to be um, knitting the sky around those branches. I thought that wine color would be pretty good for the branches. That's mainly what I was thinking. All right, let me just finish out a little bit more here. And then I'm going to have to run <laughs> because I've got I've got a critique to do after this. But um, I hope you guys will hope you enjoyed the demo and I hope you get to paint this weekend and I hope you head to the website because the sale ends our Black Friday sale ends Monday. Um, Really, the, the 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 main, you know, really take a look at the um, the membership because it's really it's super proud of it. You could probably tell our our team is it's just amazing. We have a great support team, and oh, you could see how this. I wish I could finish this for you guys because it's really starting to come together. I'll do work a little, I can go a couple more minutes. It's going to be neat.
yeah, I'm starting to, I'm starting to like the color for, for a bit. I was like, ah, the color, but now I'm liking it. And now what I can do is um, start bringing some of this in through here. And, um, yep, that's maybe a little too bright. Will you post this finished piece, uh, like on Facebook or something? On Facebook, I'll probably. Um, th this is going to take me a little bit to finish. It's not. It's a, not a. Ton it's not a small study or anything. So, I will put this on um, Etsy when I get it done. And yeah, we might. We'll probably post it on Instagram when I'm done. No promise it'll be done soon, though. No, I can't. You're kind of busy. I can't right? say. <laughs> Got a little bit of an agenda this week, and I'll try to get it. I'll try to work on it. It's it's nice, it, and you know, I think it's good to try to uh, work on things while you're while it's on on your mind, right? And uh, do you keep foam under your pastels? Foam? Yes. Mm, what, I don't know. Uh, in the foam, like, yeah, you do. In your, in your palette, you have foam under your... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be somewhat gentle with the pastels. I don't want to be throwing them around too much. I really want to get that that gesture here got to figure it out a little bit still well, i like it though and then of course you know this one has got some cool um it's got some telephone poles. You could, you know, do this kind of number and get that that kind of thing in. Um, it's got there's some little structures. You know, and then there's also there's also some little um, flowers or um, th this kind of thing here. That that uh, you know, I have to. I have to work that out. I have to commit to it, um, and I haven't quite done that, so I have to figure that out. But I think that overall, it's 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 pretty cool. I guess we better. I guess we better wrap up, huh? Because it's got the critique stream to do. Um, it's about see. that time. Yeah. I mean, just, I want to just do this, add this one color into that foreground and see what happens. Yeah, I like that a little bit. That's just echoing some of the aqua that's in the sky. And that's just gives it a little, ties that background and foreground together a little bit. But yeah. Okay, guys, thanks for joining us today. I really, really appreciate it. I really um, love doing this for you. Um, sometimes when I'm, um, we're filming the lessons, I'm like, boy, I wish we were doing a stream because there's a certain part of me that's a little more relaxed when I'm doing the live streams than I am when I'm um, teaching a lesson just by myself in the studio. So I really appreciate you um, joining and um, We'll hope we'll see. We'll probably be back next week with another stream. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.